Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. How you doing? We're going to uh, talk a little strategy today. Fantasy football, because y'all's got your drafts this weekend, or you already had them, and then you're like, Nick, why are you dropping this now? I had my draft last week. Sorry. I'm so focused on telling you not to draft Clyde Edwards Hilaire that I forgot about strategy. Let's talk strategy today, though. And what I'm going to do for this video is I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump in like a sleeper mock draft. I'm gonna pick a random spot, but I'm kind of gonna talk more like round by round strategy, not necessarily just from a single spot, but just overall ADP trends and the way that drafts tend to fall when you're in real drafts and where like the value pockets of drafts are. And I'll try to kind of go through both super flex and one quarterback, so it makes a little bit more sense for for all y'all out there. Okay, for you guys that don't want to listen to anything I have to say, I think that's the correct move. But what I would suggest doing is copying our draft guide, all right? It's basically a private website that has everything that you need for your draft, so you can just pull it up on your phone, beautifully mobile-friendly, so you don't need to watch any videos, listen to podcasts, got everything you need right in your fingertips. And the easiest and the cheapest way to get it is by going to prizepicks.com or by downloading the PrizePix app, same shit, and using promo code BDGE when you deposit $10. Ooh, it's hot in here. Let me turn the fan on. Uh, and deposit $10 or more. They're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match, okay? And then, and then, you're going to get the, the draft guide absolutely free. So make sure you do that before this weekend. Get it. We're getting emailed three times a day. People's usernames that sign up. So we'll try to get them emailed out to you at like 7 a.m., 1 p.m., 7 p.m., I think. So we're trying to get them rolling quickly once you do so. Let's jump into a sleeper draft. Right, we'll put the settings as one quarterback because I think that probably relates to you guys a lot more. But I'll kind of talk through what I'd be doing if I was in a super flex league as well. So I'm just going to take a random spot. Let's just take the 108 for freak's sake. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. So you'll see a lot of running backs rip off the board. And I think that's like a very real scenario in uh, this year's draft class. Well, you'll see a couple of dudes like the Jefferson's Chase and Cups probably occupy some spots in the first round, maybe digs every now and then. And that's realistic. So I think basically the, the way I would approach the first two rounds, I really like to leave the first two rounds with the running back wide receiver combo. And if you're in the beginning of the first round, sometimes it gets a little bit more difficult and you have to go running back, running back, because that's where the value pockets are, where you have like these elite guys up top. And then a lot of the times back, you know, here at the 211, 210, you don't get the Stefan Diggs or those guys falling to you. But in this area, you do get a nice little value pocket of Cup or Chase or Diggs, and then you get to pair it with whoever you like out of Kamara, Saquon. If you like Joe Mixon, you know, sink your submarine that way, DeAndre Swift. So so basically where we are in the draft right now, I'd be taking, I'd be probably be looking to take a wide receiver because Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup are in like the elite tier of wide receivers where I think you have this tier of running backs where it's Mixon, Swift, Kamara, Barkley, even like Aaron Jones, where I'd be very much okay taking at the 2-5, whereas you don't really get the same, uh, the same fucking hit value at the wide receiver position. Although I wouldn't be surprised if Stefan Diggs fell to me here. But there's no running back that I like head over heels above the other ones. But there is a Cooper Cup or Jamar Chase that obviously is like a huge different maker, difference maker for you. So the way I would approach the first two rounds is try to get a, a diversity of running back wide receiver for the most part. I don't think it's worth starting wide receiver wide receiver. I don't really even like starting running back running back. Although I would suggest that over the other. So we'll just go with Cooper Cup because I'm trying to have fun out here. You know, nice little wide receiver run. So we, we made the right choice here. Okay, so we're back on the clock. And again, the wide receiver tier kind of flipped. And then we're sitting here with the running backs that are looking gorgeous. And, you know, you take your pick here. I, I think the move would either be Swift or Barkley. You know, I took Barkley in the bash draft. So I'll just go with Swift here. And now we're set up with our RB1. We're set up with our wide receiver one. And I'll talk a little bit more about Superflex once we hit the third round. If you're sitting at the back end of the second round, I'm typically looking to grab Mark Andrews. If Saquon falls to you there, that's great. I would double up on running back in that sense. Um, but like a Mike Evans is another guy I'd be happy with. Michael Pittman in the third round is awesome. But you probably want to leave, if you, especially if you're starting three wide receivers, without a doubt, leave the first three rounds with at least one running back. I would not suggest a three running back start because once you get into the third round, you know, the RBs get a little bit questionable, but the, the wide receivers start to get really strong in the third, fourth, fifth round. So I think you start to load up your wide receivers, load up your flex spots with these strong guys here. So now you hit the dead zone already and it's like Akers, Montgomery, Brees. Like I'm not taking any of those guys in the third round, but I'll happily take Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, DJ Moore, Mike Williams, those type of guys. And I love the idea of getting one of these Chargers wide receivers in the third round you're usually able to get like a Justin Herbert 4-5 or 5-8 or in one quarterback leagues no tight ends that I necessarily love some people clamor for Kyle Pitts I still have too many questions about that Atlanta offense but for argument's sake we'll go with Keenan Allen and I do want to talk about super flex for a little bit I'm not typically someone who goes quarterback early in Superflex. Um, I did use my bash 104 on Justin Herbert. I wanted to anchor that team with it. And I don't 
hate it if you are in like the two to five zone, if you wanted to get like a Josh Allen or Justin Herbert or one of those guys. Uh, but typically what I'm trying to do realistically is just leave the first three rounds with a quarterback, whether that's Herbert in the first or it's Russell Wilson at the back of the second, early third or Stafford at the end of the third round, whatever the case may be, and then figure out your second quarterback in rounds like five, six, whether it's Matt Ryan or James Winston or Trevor Lawrence or something like that. So I'm not like someone that goes crazy for QBs and super flex leagues. I do want to have two really viable starters. I don't want to be left sitting there with a second quarterback that's Davis Mills or like, you know, some someone in that range, like a Baker Mayfield or whatever. So I would say you don't have to go crazy over the top with your first quarterback. You know, you don't have to take them top five, but if you do, you can, you could sit there and wait on it. So we see that little run of, ah, fuck, we missed the stack. That's very unfortunate. I mean, I'm still happy to have Keenan in my lineup, obviously still don't like the wide receivers or still don't like the uh, running backs. We're going to sit on the running backs for a long time. What I've found the most successful strategy to do this year is really that like hero RB strategy where you take one really strong one up top. You know, if you leave the first two rounds with the first three rounds with two running backs, that's okay too. You can pretty much fade the position for a long time because this entire middle round class of RBs is disgusting while the wide receivers are just gorgeous. And I know in the bash draft, I took Terry McLaurin over Quilton Sutton. So this time around, again, this is more strategy, not like player focus, but I'll take my third wide receiver and then we could still start two more flexes after that. So if you're in a PPR league, you're in two wide re- or three wide receiver league, you know, those value spots need to be adjusted for. QBs, QBs, QBs. Let's see. So tight ends, I feel like Schultz and Goddard are kind of in the same tier for me, so I'm not going to overreach on them. Typically, you can get Goddard in the sixth or seventh round, which is where I'm targeting it. Wide receiver is just still so strong for me, and I think you could start up to five wide receivers if you have three wide receivers and two flexes, so that's still where I'm eyeing it. If you wanted to grab your second running back and wanted to take a chance on Elijah Mitchell, I don't really suggest it. Dylan's the other guy that I really like here, but I think we'll be fine grabbing value at RB2, whether it's Damian Pierce, Ramondre Stevenson, Darrell Henderson, anyone like that is is someone that I'm okay kind of throwing into the RB2 slot. I think the RB2 slot is kind of like a very overrated spot in season-long leagues. You could usually find a replaceable RB2, but if you have really, really strong like consistent players at your wide receiver two, three, and then into your flexes, you're going to feel really, you're going to be able to basically set and forget your lineup for a long time. So I'm looking at this list. Like I love Hollywood Brown this year with Kyler linking back up the hop suspended Christian Kirk on Chase Edmonds gone. Um, I like Godwin even here. I'm on Ross St. Brown here. I like Godwin second half of the year. He's like a, a player that could obviously win the league for you when he's back and healthy. Um, so what I would do here is look at the QBs. Do we see a fall off in tier? I'm not going to go crazy for Joe Burrow right now. Um, I do like Jalen Hurts a lot. If he falls back to me in the sixth, that's something I might consider. Um, then uh, Otherwise, I could stack Cooper Cup with Matt Stafford or even wait for Russell Wilson for like another round or two. So what we're going to do right now is go back to wide receiver and grab our first flex spot. And, you know, whatever you feel more comfortable with, it's Hollywood or Amon Ra, but I'm going to go with Hollywood for right now. And just a plethora of terrible picks. There goes Hertz. Yeah, so Hertz goes off the board and Burrow's still sitting there. So Burrow's like a pretty good value here. I just don't know statistically he's going to so outperform Russell Wilson that I want to jump the gun. Even though if I miss here, I might have to wait for a while. But I'm on Ra, Ra, St. Brown, and Rashad Bateman are both guys that I really, really like up here. So I'm just going to grab my last flex spot and then have a fucking absolutely stellar starting lineup i took rashad in the bash so we'll just say for fuck's sake i'm on raw here like look how strong that starting lineup is right now and i know i don't have any i don't have any pieces of the bread here you know making it nice and crispy for us but we'll figure out the rest there you go we got a whole wide receiver run ah we missed got her by one fucking pick god damn damn All right, well, we're sitting here. There's Tom Brady left, who I'm not as high on. There's Dak Prescott, who I'm also not as crazy high on. I think there's like a group of about seven quarterbacks I'd be okay having. So we might look at the other positions here. Um, I'm okay with Dawson Knox or Zach Ertz. So I'm going to wait on tight end one more round. But typically, if I don't, grab tight end early if I don't grab second round Andrews or second round Kelsey or you know fourth round Pitts or whatever I'm gonna wait for Goddard Goddard's a guy I'm targeting basically everywhere and I want to get him in the seventh or eighth round so you know be smart with where you're picking be smart unlike me here if I can go back maybe I would take Goddard over Amon Ra and then grab you know whoever's left at wide receiver right now I could still be able to get Bateman which is maybe not realistic but who fucking knows Ayuk or Elijah Moore I'm okay with any of those guys we'll take Chase Edmonds here as our RB2 right they cut Sony Michelle so it's really between Edmonds and Raheem Mostert and Moser goes down. I mean, Edmonds going to play an insane amount. He's going to have like the Eckler, the Eckler role, the DeAndre Swift role, the Aaron Jones role. Like it's it's going to be a big fucking year for him. Listen, I don't think Pierce is going to fall here in your friends and family league, and or in most sharper leagues, and he might fall down here in friends and family leagues. I forgot he was on the list there, but I'd be absolutely targeting Pierce. If I do miss out on the tight ends that I like, though, I don't know. Now Pierce is just way too valuable to pass up on him here. 
Honestly, I feel like good with those running backs. Is most people probably wouldn't, but I feel okay with that. We can find one off the waiver wire that'll be a strong RB two. You only have to play two two running backs throughout the year. There goes both of the tight ends. I kind of liked, so I waited like an asshole. How are we feeling about Trey? Y'all, y'all don't like Trey, do you? People don't like Trey. They re-signed Jimmy, so that means his leash is shorter. His upside is still very much there, but yes, his leash is definitely shorter. Makes it a little scary, I guess. Uh, Stafford's elbow is a little bit scary, but I do have Cooper Cup, so we're just going to go with the stack here, grab Stafford, and be done with it. There goes Trey. Back up on the clock. What tight ends are left? We don't want to get sick. Of you. Yeah, I left, my, I left myself in a bad spot here with tight ends. Like, I should have probably taken Goddard instead of Amon Ra or at one of these picks. Like, if Damian Pierce is not going to be left there. So, typically, if you miss Goddard in the seventh, you should take Ertz or uh, Dawson Knox here in the eighth. So, I'm sitting here, and, I mean, I, li- I actually like these three in a row here. I like Njoku, Higby, and Irv Smith. Any of those that's, like, late-round flyers, I might take two of them just to see what kind of pops off there. But... That's what I'm going for. Um, and then I might just start piling back on wide receivers. I might draft, like, if we have 15 roster spots, 16 roster spots, I might draft seven wide receivers because you could start five of them. Maybe start going with high upside guys. Maybe go with guys you feel comfortable filling in. If, you know, if you have five wide receivers, one of them is probably going to get hurt. I kind of really like what I've seen from Marquez Valdez-Scantling in KC. I mean, not necessarily how he's played, but just overall how much he's been targeted with Mahomes under center. So these are the guys I'm, I'm trying to target here is to back up one of the five that gets hurt early on but I, I absolutely love the fucking team like look the team is really really strong all around when you look at the when you look at the roster on the right side here Stafford at QB Swift Edmonds Cooper Cup Keenan Allen Cortland Sutton Marquise Brown like when you go wide receiver heavy you don't really have holes in your lineup it's kind of it's kind of a beautiful thing Julio went off Daryl Henderson went off that's unfortunate I'm gonna wait one more round on tight end and grab one of those three that I like yeah, I mean, listen, we're, you're in the 11th, 12th round. This is kind of where you get your guys. Or if someone falls deep to you, or if your first round pick is someone that needs to be handcuffed, you know, you start looking at at them in this area. Like a Jamal Williams would make sense for me here, but I might want to shoot for more upside. Though I only really need one really strong running back for it throughout the year, so Swift getting Swift insurance might not be the worst idea here. So we'll just go with Jamal Williams, play a little safe here. You know, in best ball, you're not looking for handcuffs, right? You just want upside. But here, it's like insurance, and you want that throughout the season long league. So we waited on our tight end. Hunter Henry went off the board. Uh, you know what? I could double stack here because I already have Stafford. So Stafford Cup, they make up the majority of the Rams passing offense. But I like Hickby too. His splits when Robert Woods is out of the game is uh, are, are pretty significant. So if I do wait on tight end, you know, if I miss the Goddard, if I miss all those guys up top that I really liked, I would probably double down on tight ends. So I might go with an Irv Smith. Irv Smith, the guy I really like, he's obviously coming off an injury. He's going to be ready for week one. He's not someone I want to be comfortable with putting in my lineup week one. But we're going to grab him just for also insurance. I think he's got a lot of upside, athletic, ready to break the f*** out. And then we probably, I mean, I guess you guys play like defense kickers. I don't really play those in my league, so I don't give a fuck. What I would do for defenses, though, is grab kickers last round, defenses second to last round. Look at week one matchup. You're going to be streaming them anyway. So look at their week one matchup. Look at guys who are, look at teams that are playing at home. Look at teams that are favored to win in week one. And look at teams that are playing against rookies or turnover prone quarterbacks. That is how you succeed in streaming defenses. And then if you need a tiebreaker, look at the second week. Say, hey, is there any team that's playing against a shit opponent week one and week two so that I don't have to stream a second week? So we have four running backs. If there's someone that I really like, I might grab like an Eno Benjamin like a Jeff Wilson, guys who are like high upside handcuffs, but I don't really care too much about that. I think Isaiah McKenzie has a ton of upside, so we'll grab him. And now our roster is just constructed in a way that's so fucking wide receiver heavy, and it's it's kind of beautiful, actually. I love how this team has turned out so far. Starting lineup is just strong as shit. Uh, I really wouldn't pick a backup quarterback in a 1QB league. You can always find one on the waiver wire. Let's just go, you know, he's supposed to be the two there in Arizona, and I don't really fuck with James Conner this year. So that is the uh, the roster. We'll talk about it for a second. You can see it here. Stafford, Swift, Edmonds, Cooper Cup, Keenan Allen, Cortland Sutton, Higby, Marquise Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, Damian Pierce. Oh, this was a super flex setting. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was. What the fuck? Oh, they drafted as if it was half PPR. Then. MVS, Jamal Williams, Irv Smith, Isaiah McKenzie, Eno Benjamin. Realistically, like the way I would look at this again, I'm, I, I just follow my rankings when it's the first couple rounds because you're not really going like anything deviated away from just the best players available. But I would start to think of how you build your roster based on the starting settings. Like if it's three wide receivers, again, if it's full PPR, you might lean towards wide receivers and just go super, super heavy on that front. If you're on the back end of the, like if, if you're drafting really early in the first round, that puts you in a little bit of a tough spot because there's not a lot of value props 
or a lot of value picks in the early third round. Depends, you know, if you want Javante Williams, you want Leonard Fournette, but that's when I would suggest grabbing like a wide receiver in the middle there. So if you go like Derrick Henry, Mike Evans, Leonard Fournette, Derrick Henry, Mike Evans, Javante Williams, something like that. But I would walk away from the first three rounds with at least one wide receiver. And then in rounds four, five, six, there's just so much value there that you could plug up wide receiver two, three, and flex. So one QB league is pretty, I feel like it's, it's pretty obvious. The The value is just middle rounds uh, of wide receivers. And then the tight end, I want Goddard everywhere. If I don't get Andrews as a, as a late round pa- or late second round, early third round pass catcher. QBs, I, I, I like the fifth, sixth, seventh round of value there. Like I like Kyler if he drops into the fifth, sixth. Russell Wilson, Jalen Hurts, guys there. Uh, I don't blame me for fading it because it's like, oh, if I can get Matt Stafford at, in the 10th round, ninth round, feel pretty good about that as well. I mean, one QB is really easy. I would say though, if you can stack early on, like if you can get one of the Chargers wide receivers and then get Herbert fourth, fifth round, don't hate that at all. This dude is odds on favorite to lead the NFL in passing yards and in passing touchdowns going into his prime 24 years old. Like this offense is going to be insane this year. So a uh, Herbert stack is quite beautiful in LA. If you're in super flex again, like I'm I, I'm not going to push for a first round quarterback. Like if I miss Josh Allen, if I miss Justin Herbert, I'm not going to reach for a quarterback at the end of the first round just because it's super flex, but I do want to leave the first two rounds. I would suggest if you're back end of the first round in a super flex, fade the first round, grab someone on the second round on the way back. So take your RB1 or wide receiver one at, you know, 109 and then like Jalen Hurts at the 204 or whoever's, you know, Russell Wilson at the 206 or something like that because better value there and I wouldn't reach up around when you can get someone that's better at a more specific skill position. And then, you know, three, four, five rounds later, you can get Kirk Cousins or uh, Derek Carr, or Matt Ryan or whatever. So that's really the, the biggest pieces of advice I can give you for draft strategy. I think for the most part, I would really focus on nailing a ton of wide receivers. I would get one really solid running back one, and then I would fill your flexes up with these just awesome, awesome options at wide receivers. And for more like player specific takes, obviously you can always get the draft guide available on prizepicks.com, promo code BDGE. When you deposit $10 or more, it's going to get you a 100% deposit match plus draft guide absolutely free email to you. I just mumbled for like 25 straight minutes, so I hope some of that made sense, but it made sense in my head. I love you. Good luck on your drafts this weekend. If I don't see you again, it's not goodbye. It's see you never.